I've always marked moments in my life by movies. How old I was, where I watched it, who was with me. It's just another part of what makes movies so magical. There always seemed to be a movie on in my house when I was growing up. It was either background noise, a way to pass the time, or an opportunity for the family to come together. My brother, dad, mom, and me. There was this running joke in our family about how my mom couldn't stay awake during movies, usually drifting off and snoring within the first 15 minutes. Though there was one night where she stayed up and made it all the way through the 1998 version of Godzilla, of all movies. That almost seemed more embarrassing. We never let her live that down. There was always something frustrating to me about her falling asleep during a movie. Movies are an experience that you want to share, and so in a way, falling asleep felt like an abandonment. But as I got older, I realized that there was actually something sweet about it. She never cared what the movie was, she just wanted to be with us. There's something so peaceful about being in the comfort of your own home surrounded by family. Paper covers rock! To lose a buckwheat! My mom always joked that I brought her to the three worst movies she'd ever seen in her whole life. Biodome. Good Burger. Hey, hey, would you watch it? Sorry. And Tornado. I have a lot of movie memories with my mom. I remember New Year's Eves, where we'd watch movies all night until the clock struck midnight. I remember crawling on my stomach next to my brother as we tried to quietly sneak a peek at speed behind our parents' backs. I remember my mom weeping during the title sequence to An Affair to Remember, immediately transported back to past viewings just by the opening theme. It's funny how these random moments get stuck in your mind. Watch enough movies and they'll begin to shape your reality and experiences. You'll begin forming biases and preconceived notions of how the world works. I've carried those images with me into every new experience of my life. College, falling in love, first job, going to therapy. I've always had trouble separating movies from real life. When my mom was diagnosed with uterine cancer in 2019, I immediately thought of movies and how they've portrayed cancer, sickness, death, and grief. Maybe it was a way of processing the news or mentally preparing myself for what was to come in the following months and years, but there is no preparing for that. I know that now. My mother died in the early morning of July 13th, 2021, and ever since then I've continued thinking about those same movies, comparing my experiences with what I saw on screen, and there's a lot I can relate to. Frustrations with the medical staff, Desperately waiting for more medicine so your loved one isn't in any pain. Give my daughter the shot! Thank you very much. Hospice care, the suffocating feeling of death in your house. I have sickness all around me and you fucking ask me my life? What's wrong? I'm using death in your bed, in your house. The humiliation for the person it just strips them of all dignity. The glazed over, unfocused eyes. Unconscious from morphine. Not wanting to leave their side in case they wake up even for a second. What if she wakes up for two minutes and I'm not here? Holding and kissing their hand. Staring at pictures around the house, longing for simpler times. Having conversations with the unconscious body as if everything were normal. I'm gonna bring your daughters in now. Alex is home from school. Try to be nice, okay? Giving them permission to stop fighting and let go. If you wanna go, I want you to know it's okay. It's okay. Never knowing how to respond to the sentiment, sorry for your loss. I'm very, very sorry. Thank you. Second guessing your decisions, wondering if there was something different you could have done, looking for someone to blame. If you had done it my way, you'd be holding your baby in your arms right now. Intense grief flaring up when you least expect it. Hey, I think there's something wrong with me. What do you mean, like what, are you sick? 
I don't know. <laughs> wanting to understand why. Wanting to make sense of everything. But of course you can't. Oh god, I want to know why! Why? Lord, I wish I could understand! What a lot of movies fail to convey, at least compared to my experience, is just how ugly dying is. A lot of movies have the person drifting peacefully in their hospital bed, or round-the-clock hospice care in the comfort of their own home. I want you to come in with me. Okay. And I want you to stay away from me. Okay. I want you there in case he needs anything because I am not going to help him. It's usually washed in bright lights, beautiful music, and a cathartic resolution. There's nothing that could have prepared me for hospice. We didn't have round-the-clock help. It was just family struggling to do our best trying to give her a shred of dignity in her final moments, turning her trembling body as she groaned in pain, changing her diapers, cleaning her naked body, forcing medication down her throat. There's a lot of movie moments I felt robbed of. I didn't get that cathartic resolution with my mom. There wasn't any shared laughter or memories, no grand epiphany on life and didn't even get to say goodbye. She was already gone by the time I got to the hospital, drifted away by the morphine drip. The entire process is a collection of these small moments, counting her breaths at her bedside, noticing the red nail polish on her fingernails as I held her hand, the creaking of metal as she was eventually lowered into the ground. There are some beautiful moments sprinkled throughout, if you look hard enough, but make no mistake, dying is ugly. I was too scared to be there at the end when she died. I boarded a plane back home to my wife and child. I just didn't want to have that image burned into my brain forever. That's not how I wanted to remember her. I'll carry that shame with me the rest of my life. Back in 2011, my mother and I went to the New Frontier short screening at the Sundance Film Festival. It was a block of experimental shorts that pushed the boundaries on conventional story. And dropped in the middle of the lineup was this 39-minute behemoth, Tornado, by Mexican filmmaker Francis Alice. The entire short consists of Francis chasing dust devils in the highlands south of Mexico City. I hated the film when I first saw it. But I've been thinking about it a lot with the death of my mom. There was no structure with an inciting incident, climax, obstacle, turning point, or resolution. Just a single person fighting against the random chaos of nature. A beginning and an end. Never had I seen so many walkouts and people falling asleep in their seats. But my mom and I made it through all 39 minutes. My mom was always steadfast in her support, even if she didn't completely understand it all. She encouraged me to go to film school, helping me write my application after I was rejected, and even called me with the news once I was finally accepted. When my short film Dead Technology got into its first film festival at this tiny goat farm outside of Atlanta, she was there. She even started producing films and started a scholarship at Baylor University in order to help other aspiring filmmakers achieve their dreams. That's how I want to remember her. I've always marked moments in my life by movies. I remember eating pizza and watching Clue with my dad and brother as my mom laid next to us asleep in her hospice bed. It's the last movie we all watched together. And the fact that my mom slept through it all felt oddly familiar and comforting. It's not the movie script ending I wanted, but, like I said, there are some beautiful moments sprinkled throughout. And I'm trying. I'm trying really hard to find them. <laughs>